Hey y'all, welcome to Art of the Budget. My name's Nicole, my pronouns are she and her, and I live in the Pacific Northwest on the traditional unceded territory of the Coast Salish Nations. And today I'm going to talk about um, my investing mindset. Um, this is part of my Investing 101 series um, where I share what I've learned along the way. I am not a financial planner of any sort. I'm just an artist and educator who has been learning about these things and is just trying to share it as a jumping off point for other people to um, learn. And uh, I think that won't take very long. So I'm also going to talk about some of my favorite personal finance books. Um, okay, so uh, I just want to clarify, like, who is the audience for this Investing 101 series? Um, if you're already, uh, if you've already got a portfolio and you've already got a pretty good handle on investing, um, it's probably not uh, totally geared towards you. Although, uh, especially if you're a friend I've learned from or a fellow YouTuber I've learned from, I'd love you to drop your knowledge down below in the comments um, of any of these uh, videos in the series or, or any video. Um, but really this uh, series is for people like me who um, have maybe heard terms like portfolio or in investing or Roth IRA and thought, hmm, that all sounds really confusing. And isn't capitalism evil? And um, to that I say, yes, it is. Um, but uh, investing is one way um, through compounding interest that we can really increase uh, the value of our resources. Um, there are certainly other ways. This is just one um, because it has a pretty low threshold versus like buying property or something like that. I think it's one that's pretty accessible. Um, but yes, it absolutely does take advantage of a kind of evil system. Um, so for a lot of people, they might think like, why would I want to be part of that? Um, and so that's kind of what I want to talk about. So one, um, so I'm 41 years old. Uh, it is questionable whether social security will even be a thing by the time I retire and I'm able to retire. And, um, which for me will probably be in my late sixties. Um, and yeah, so we don't know if that will be even a thing. And I am an adult, I'm single, and I am someone like many of you who doesn't, doesn't have access to generational wealth. So the only person that is going to be financially taking care of future Nicole is present day Nicole. Now, of course, I say financially because I have siblings and I'm part of a beautiful network of friends. And I think that we will all be contributing in different ways to take care of each other in the future. Um, but financially, um, yeah, this is something that I need to plan for, for myself, um, for Nicole in the future, but also for Nicole's community in the future. So as a person who has a variety of privileges, um, I do think that is one way that I can contribute um, by investing in the capital that I have access to. Um, for my future community and my future self. So um, I, th I think for me, it comes down to there not really being a better way. Sometimes people say, well, like maybe capitalism will fall. And to that, I say, hell yeah. And if that happens, then hopefully we're going to be living in a utopia and money that I set aside for investment won't matter. Hey, Violet. Um, but we just don't know if that's going to happen and, um, we don't know what that will look like. So for right now, I'm just doing the best I can with what I have access to and the resources that I'm aware of. So that's why I want to share those resources. Not because I necessarily think that investing is like morally okay. Um, but because I think it's one of very few tools that we have access to. So. Now I'm going to talk about books that I have liked. Um, along these lines, this is one of the first books that I read. It's called Your Money or Your Life. It's by Vicki Robin and Joe Dominguez. And I actually listened to it on audiobook, which is a great way to listen to it. Um, but 
but basically this gives you a lot of concrete information about how to invest and how to maybe even retire early. I think this is one of the original um, fire or financial independence retire early books. And what I like about it is that it sort of frames early retirement as getting out of the rat race so that you can um, live a better life. And part of that better life is contributing to making the world a better place. At least that's kind of what I got out of it. Um, so I highly recommend this. This is more of a, there is some nuts and bolts, but this is more of a philosophy book. The next book I want to talk about is Women and Money by Susie Orman. While Susie Orman may be a polarizing uh, figure, um, as most of these gurus are, I certainly don't endorse any of them. Um, what I like about this book is that it's very, very structured, very, very clear, and coming into this really knowing nothing, like literally nothing, um, this was very accessible um, for me, and it helped me get a handle and create sort of a framework to start putting this information into. The next book I want to talk about is I Will Teach You To Be Rich, and this book I thought was really excellent. Um, I kind of get like a frat boy vibe from the author Ramit Sethi, um, but despite that, the way that he frames everything is very clear. It's very nuts and bolts, very much talks about like basic budgeting, paying off debt, and um, how to invest, which most books will talk about. Most of these books will say pretty much the same thing, um, but I just kind of, again, like the way that he frames it and how he structures it in the book works really well for my brain. He talks about quick, set it and forget it types of investing. And he also talks about if you want to build your own portfolio, you can dig a little deeper. Um, I knew next to nothing when I read it. And this gave me, again, that a little deeper than the Susie Orman book, that framework to start thinking about how to actually build my investment portfolio. Next book I want to talk about is the A Cat's Guide to Money. Um, this book is pretty good. Again, it goes through budgeting, paying off debt, and beginning to invest. Um, this is by Lillian Carebake, and Lillian also runs Oh My Dollar podcast. And I learned about this from Forever Temporary, a fellow um, YouTuber who has a lot of similar interests to me. And um, yes, yeah, so the Oh My Dollar podcast is really good. It's geared towards um, creatives who run small businesses. And I just think it's excellent. You should listen to all of it and you should also get the book. Um, and the book also comes with stickers. All right, next thing I'm gonna talk about is Broke Millennial Takes on Investing. Sorry, this book is very shiny. Um, this is by Erin Lowry. Uh, she has a, a previous book, which I haven't read, which is just called Broke Millennial. I assume that that's more about budgeting and paying off debt. This one is specifically about um, investing. And I would say like it was a good layer on top of these other books to really learn about how you create investment accounts and what you put into them. All right. And then the last book I'm going to talk about is called Bad With Money with Bad With Money by Gabby Dunn. I don't have it with me. Um, and the book is very good, but just like Lillian Carebake, Gabby Dunn has a podcast and it's called Bad With Money. Um, I love this podcast. This one really isn't nuts and bolts at all. It's more about economics and the sort of like way things work and actually the way they don't work. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, like economic justice, I highly recommend checking out the podcast, especially season two goes deep into this kind of stuff. All right, those are my favorites. Um, and I've got two honorable mentions. One is John C. Bogle's, I think it's the little book of common sense investing. Um, I listened to this on audiobook. It was pretty good. It was very informative. Um, John C. Bogle basically invented index funds. Um, so it's really interesting to learn about that. I don't think it's essential, but it was a pretty good listen. And my second honorable mention is actually a book I haven't read, and it is J.L. Collins' Simple Path to Wealth. So I just haven't come across it. I haven't been able to get it on audiobook from the library. And um, 
I am not ready to just outright buy it, although I probably will soon. I've heard about it from so many people. I assume that it's along the lines of this other stuff, this very straightforward investing um, for regular humans. Uh, so I definitely recommend checking it out. So those are all my favorites. Let me know down below if I missed your favorite book um, and what you like about it. And let me know if you've got anything to add um, to anything that I said. I've got a how to set up investment or like how and where to set up investment accounts. And then I'll have another video coming out what to put into those accounts. Um, so those will be coming up soon and I will see you then.